Hey everyone. Uh, today I'd like to talk about sort of an, sort of uh, an age-old battle um, that I wind up having to deal with, um, having both been a student and a teacher. Um, really kind of started uh, way back in high school when I had my first art teacher and I had my own fights with her. But that kind of thing, you know, you, you might think that's kind of a petty thing, but it's it's funny because the, the same arguments that she made back then are the same ones that I hear a lot nowadays. You know, it's I, there, I, I hear I hear her say the same things that she said to me back then, um, and pretty much the same arguments that, that that I you know that I originally had with her, and the same things that I see now as a teacher, um, and just it's 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 stuff that I, I see everywhere. Um, there's a lot of beliefs that go on about modern art, uh, and I feel that they're deeply ingrained in our culture. Uh, everywhere you go, you know, you'll you'll see it, and it's not just limited here to um, here in Canada. Uh, it's something that I see, you know, everywhere I, I go. I've been to um, I've been to Italy. I've been to France. I've been to um, many different uh, countries. That you know, uh, it's, you know, I've been to Europe uh, a fair bit, and. Well, actually, you know, I would probably say that the modern art thing, it's really a North American phenomenon. Um, just, you know, from my dealings with people and just, just from seeing uh, the kind of artwork and stuff that, that you'll find that is, you know, that people will put on the walls. You know, when you go to a, a cafe, if you go to people's houses, um, offices, I see a lot of this modern art. So today's discussion, uh, well, not really a discussion, maybe terribly drawn out long monologue is about modern art versus production art. So anyway, first question is, is about modern art. And the 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 fight that I, I tend to have, you know, this is this is the kind of thing, this is the, the attitude that tends to accompany modern art. It's that if you can understand, you know, modern art, then you are a sophisticated intellectual. And I got a lot of problems with this. Uh well, maybe I don't because maybe I, I've never really thought of myself as a sophisticated intellectual because I certainly don't understand modern art. Um, you know, I, I'm 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 just like anybody else. I play video games. I, you know, surf the web. I like to, you know, do the same things that everyone else does. Um, you know, it's it's I'm not a sophisticated intellectual. I don't, I'm sure I don't watch TV, but it's not like I, I went to you know university. It's not like I got a you know any any amazing degrees or anything like that. Um, you know, I, I don't have you know a PhD in anything. I'm I'm certainly not a sophisticated intellectual uh, by any any stretch of the imagination. And you know, when I when I, I I look at these modern art bits, you know, these these strange paintings, you know, things made by uh, Jackson Pollock and by uh, Picasso, Pablo Picasso, you know, the later cubism stuff, and I, I just can't really grasp it. I, I can't, I can't make sense of it. And, you know, I, I think every time I run into a lot of, you know, these, sometimes, you know, I run into the, these, you know, people who appreciate this kind of modern art, um, and they'll say to me, you know, you, there, there's something, you know, they'll, they'll say this, they'll say this, they'll say, you just don't understand. Um, you know, sure. I, I'm, I'm afraid I just don't understand. It's like some, somehow I'm damaged. I'm sorry. I, I don't understand this modern art. I don't understand this really weird, you know, these paint splats. Um, and somehow there's supposed to be a deeper meaning, but I sure as hell don't see it. And I'm not going to make any effort to really, you know, see it. And, um, you know, it's, it's kind of, kind of, you know, kind of, I, I get kind of, I get, I get kind of annoyed. You know, it's, it's just these, these. The, there's there's really nothing in there, you know, to make this modern artwork. You know, I, I I really don't believe that they're drawing from some invisible source, you know, um, other than maybe a, a bit of an influence of drugs. And uh, then they always talk about this thing they call style. And style, I mean, they always say, oh, my work has a lot of style. I'm always trying to develop my own style. And, you know, to that effect... You know, how can you, you know, I asked them, you know, well, what is style? You know, what what is the style business? Um, You know, how can you say your art has style? How much style does it have? You know, can we measure it? Is is there, you know, is there any quantifiable way to say how much style is in that work? And people say, oh, it either, you know, you either, it either has it or it doesn't. And they, you know, they give me the whole, whole run around, the whole beat around the bush thing. And it's not like you can go off to, you know, 
freaking Walmart and, and, you know, buy a, a forklift skid worth of style, you know, Kmart Blue Light Special, you know, style four ninety nine by the cart. And you can't get style. The style is not something that's definable. You can't say whether you have it or you don't. So it's useless to pursue style. Then there's the other one. Um, the, the other thing that they say that the work has, and they say it has energy. Oh. Now, energy... <laughs> energy is a is is a term that comes from science. Um, funny that these art people who who hate the intellectual, you know, it's funny that that you've got these these artists who they hate the mathematicians and the scientists and the doctors, all these intellectuals, these these smart people, and they say, you know, it's it's all the the boring people, just like you know, they see the Apple ads. You got the Apple ads where they have the the the, the cool and groovy artists on the one side, and then the boring kind of office guy on the other side, and that's how they see a lot of us, you know, people, scientists and and doctors and whatnot. But they still want the modern art to appear as if it's intellectual, you know. As as if, as if you have to be an intellectual to understand this um, modern art. And so here they are borrowing this word called energy, a scientific term. You know, I, I am by no means a scientist. I have never worn, you know, I don't wear lab coats or anything like that. Um, the most science I understand is maybe how a bunch of magnets stick together and how you can use magnets to raise hard drives. And, um, you know, I, I can understand certain things like, uh, you know, how electrical energy works to power a motor. I, I can understand the workings of, a, of, of, an, of an electrical, of a DC motor. Uh, I can understand how uh, an internal combustion engine works. You know, I understand how sunlight, sun, you know, the sun, which is a, a source of energy um, through a fusion, it's a fusion reaction. I understand, you know, how fusion can generate energy, generates a lot of light energy. Light energy comes down here to the earth. Um, light energy is transmuted by plants through a process called photosynthesis. Uh, I don't know exactly all the, the details between how photosynthesis works, but I do know that photosynthesis creates uh, sugars, plant sugars, turns the, the light energy into chemical energy. Well, I mean, batteries, batteries got, you know, lead acid batteries, uh, nickel cadmium batteries, that's chemical energy. You know, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, it's, and now this chemical energy, you know, the, these, these plant sugars can be eaten by people, can be eaten by animals, we can eat the animals, and that, that, that energy, you know, which has come from originally from the sun, fusion energy, you know, uh, from the sun, turned into light, beamed down to the earth, arrives at earth, becomes photosynthesized, becomes, you know, uh, chemical energy, we consume that chemical energy, and now we have the ability to turn that chemical energy into electrical impulses, neuroelectric impulses, which can drive a muscle, you know, we've got metabolic processes that, that help us do all this kind of stuff. Turns into, you know, kind of a uh, neuroelectric energy, uh, neuro, just, it's just neuroelectricity. Drives your muscles and gives you the ability to, to move. You know, lets you do things. Lets you, lets you, you know, let, let's, let's things happen. Um, and so, you know, by, with, with this, with this, this now we can, we can take this light energy, which originally came from the sun, transmute it through all these different processes. And now we can throw things. We can throw rocks. You know, we can pick up a rock pick up an object and you know since we can move ourselves we can transfer you know this chemical energy into electrical energy into kinetic energy and throw the rock now the rock has its own kinetic energy but energy by the way is just uh i think it's just the the the, the term is the definition is just the ability to do work the ability to do work so you know, when I have energy, when I have, you know, a full stomach, I have the energy to go out and shovel the snow, which I'm going to have to deal with after this. Um, you know, I've got the en energy to do work. I've got the ability to do work. Same thing with a rock. When you throw a rock, you give the rock a certain amount of energy, a certain amount of the ability to cave in a person's skull or break a window. You know, that is energy. And when you look at a painting, I'm sorry, but you don't get energy from a painting. It is just pixels on a screen, it's ink on canvas, it's, you know, it's, come on, it, it's not a source of energy, right? You're using the wrong term for it. Um, you know, maybe there, it has a psychological effect. It, it can, it can be exciting. When you look at, you know, caffeine, caffeine from, from, from Coca-Cola or from, uh, from, from, uh, you know, coffee. What is caffeine? Caffeine is not, does not give you energy. It's a stimulant. It has a psychological, um, you know, a physiological effect that helps you release the energy you have. But if you don't have any energy, it's no go. The, the caffeine itself does not have any calories. Maybe sugar does, but um, it's, it's merely a stimulant. So I would say that, you know, if, if, if you look at, you know, any kind of artwork that is interesting to you, it's merely a stimulant. It's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's simply, you know, stimulating. It's not necessarily giving you energy. So, you know, enough of this bastard, bastardization of terms. Um, and 
here's the other thing. Every time, a lot of times, whenever I I, I meet you know people off the street, uh, I meet uh, noobs, you know, total uh, totally new students. Um, they often have the mind of you know a modern artist. You know, they they, they you you ask them, you know, they or they'll ask you, you know, uh, oh, so you know, what do you do when you draw? You just you just move the pencil around, you know. They you, you just you know, if I guess if I want to get get a picture done, I just you know move the pencil and, and a picture comes out. You know, and that's that is the mind of a modern artist. And the mind of a modern artist, you know, um, is to do whatever you want and let them figure it out. And this is this is basically what you know what, what they want to do is because they don't want to think, they don't want to plan, they don't want to to figure any of this stuff out. Um, they just want to they just want to paint. You know, they just want to paint and. Hopefully, you know, whatever it is that'll come out is going to be good to look at and they can sell it. And it's an incredibly, you know, selfish way to, to work. Um, you know, I, I've, you've got, um, you've got these, these people who are doing this modern art and they don't really care about how, um, how the audience, they don't care, you know, I'm afraid I'm just a member of the audience, like all the rest of you. Um, they don't care what I think about the art. Uh, they don't care what you think about the art. They don't care what you, whether or not you can understand it. Um, you know, they're just doing what they want and letting you figure it out. And they're not putting any effort into figuring out, you know, how can I make something appealing to you? How can I make something that will interest you? Um, they're just doing whatever they want. Um, they're doing whatever is coming to them, and they. They're they're gonna say you know it's like well I guess if you if you the problem with say being a production artist you know like you know doing production art the problem with with doing something for money is that oh all of a sudden you are selling out you know um, you're no longer original and you're selling out and and now you're whoring yourself out and hold on a second I don't think there's anything wrong with doing things for money because you know the the carpenter that built this house you know the the, the architects and, and people that built this house. Um, they did it for the money. I don't think they're whores. Um, the doctor that went and you know fixed me, you know, fi the, the the doctor that came came along and, and you know stitched up the hole in my side when I had a when I had a you know collapsed lung, you know, went the surgeons that went and, and repaired me with tit titanium staples. I don't think they're they're whores. They they did it for the money too. Um, I don't begrudge them them that. You know, um, I, I look at you know the accountant who handles my taxes, who does it for the money. Uh, I don't begrud begrudge her that. I don't call her a whore. Uh, I, in fact, I, I, I very deeply respect all these people who will, you know, do things for the money. You know, I, I think they deserve to be compensated. Um, they deserve to be paid. And the other thing is, you'll get a lot of these people who are modern artists who, you know, they, they, they think they're they're intellectuals and whatnot, and they complain that oh, nobody understands me. You know, I I'm an artiste, but nobody understands me. You know, I'm in the avant-garde, and they 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 just don't feel. You know, they they they're mad at the world. They're mad at the world for not, you know, understanding them, for being misunderstood, and not getting, you know, what they deserve. And I'm sorry, but if you do a bad job at art, no one's going to pay you. You know, if you do a bad bad job at this or that, you no one's going to pay you. If you're if you're just going to get, if you want to be the next Jackson Pollock, you know, I think that's kind of an unrealistic expectation to be able to just get coked up, uh, dribble some paint on on a canvas, and be paid two million dollars for it. You know, quite frankly, I say to the people that actually buy modern art, you get what you deserve. That's my saying. People who buy art, period, any kind of art, anyone who buys art gets what they deserve because, you know, you get what you see. And the people who have bought this artwork and they say, oh, they understand this and that, well, I'm afraid they're just, they're, they're just doing whatever they can to make sure, you know, they're, they're just trying not to let everybody know that they're complete idiots from blowing two million dollars on a piece of modern art. You get what you pay for. And, you know, that's that's the problem with modern art. But anyway, I wanted to talk about modern art versus production art. I didn't want to just, you know, let modern art take the whole show out because I don't want to talk about modern art anymore. So then we got the whole thing about, you know, production art. And well, okay, what's the difference between, you know, modern art and production art? And one of the questions, you know, that you'll get is, well, what does a production artist do to create pretty pictures? You know, what do you, what do I do? You know, uh, what, 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 you know, what am I, what, what buttons am I gonna push? You know, what, what paint do I do? And when you ask a modern art, well, what do you do to create pretty pictures? And, and they'll say, oh, I just draw. I just see it. I just take the pencil and I just go and I just see it. I just, you know, I, I just do it. I just draw. I just paint. 
And I would like to say that as, as a production artist, that it's not that simple. I do two things, designing and drawing, two things. Um, Designing and drawing are two different things. Uh, you have to do them both. Um, you'll do the designing before the drawing, except I can't really call it designing or drawing because I'm afraid the modern artists have gone and bastardized these words as well, just like they, they typically do. And the reason why is because, you know, I, I'm not going to use designing and drawing anymore is because, you know, the modern artist is going to grab a pencil and just go blah, 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 and says, oh, there's my cool design. Look at my great design. Um, you know, you got people who will just copy someone else. They'll copy another drawing that they've seen. They'll trace something out in the seat there's my design. I drew that. You know, I, there's my drawing. That's my drawing. That's drawing. And so I'm afraid I can't use these words anymore because they've been thoroughly bastardized. And so instead of drawing, uh, instead of using the words designing and drawing, I'm going to use a pair of synonyms. Um, and I'm going to use inventing and drafting. So inventing and drafting, same thing. They're synonyms. They mean the same thing. Um, inventing. Let's take a look at an invention like, say, a hammer. You know, someone said, oh, I need to, I've got this nail, I need to put this into wood, so we need to invent a tool to ram this nail into a piece of wood. You know, that's, that's, that's probably how the hammer came about. You know, I'm, I'm sure Thomas Edison, you know, when he wanted to make a light bulb, said, well, we got to find some way to get, you know, lighting in the house. We, you know, there's something wrong with these, these, these current oil lamps we're using. They're a fire hazard. They're, they're dangerous. Um, you know, the, maybe that, 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 that was a bit of a problem. They, they needed to design something that was safer. So, you know, a, a light bulbs or whatnot. Um, maybe he borrowed the idea from someone else, but the, the, the whole thing is that the, the, the light bulb is an invention. It was something that was invented to solve a problem. And so whenever you're going to draw something, you know, you don't just go and you draw. You have to have something to draw. You have to think, what am I going to draw? And sometimes if you don't have a subject in front of you, if you're not going to copy something in front of you, then you're going to have to invent it. You're going to have to invent something. Um, you know, if you're going to make, if you're going to draw a car, uh, you know, if you're going to do any production art, you're going to uh, do any kind of look development. You're going to figure out, well, what, how about this vehicle that we're going to use for this video game? Well, you're going to have to invent it. You're going to have to figure out, you know, uh, where is this vehicle going to be used? You know, what's the environment that we're using this vehicle in? How many people does it have to hold? What kind of weapons does it have to carry? How do we power the weapons? How do we power the car? Um, you know, uh, how much cargo, how much room does it have to hold? In it? You know, how much cargo space is there? Um, what do we have to protect against? You know, is it being attacked from, you know, from the outside uh, by, by, you know, some kind of monsters? Is it for against zombies? You know, what, what is this vehicle meant for? This is invention. So once you, you know, you might not be able to invent everything at once. You might at least be able to figure out, say, you know, how many people it's going to carry, and then you're going to have to do a little bit of drawing first. But, you know, you go back and forth. You go back and forth between the inventing and the drawing. One thing drives the other. And I don't say drawing anymore. I say drafting. Drafting, because drafting, well, whenever you invent something like, you know, say a house, for instance, um, you know, a draftsman goes and, and takes a thing and, and creates, well, he, make, he makes a diagram. He makes a diagram of all the parts that are going to be needed for the house and where they're going to be put together. That's drafting. Um, and, and drawing is, is no different. Drawing is, is also drafting uh, in that, um, you know, you have to understand the forms. Uh, sorry, it's, it's forms are really just, they're just lumps of, like lumps of clay, lumps of stuff. You know, they've got solid, you know, solid mass. That is a form. So when you are, are, are drawing, you are drafting the forms. You are drafting the dimensions of the form. You're saying how wide, how tall, you know. Um, you're, it's, you're, it's like sculpting, you know. You're, you're, you're basically cutting at sharp edges and, and, and tall edges and, and uh, you know, like you're cutting sharp sharp edges or rounded surfaces or, you know, you're seeing how things are curved. That's drafting. Um, and so the skill for, for drawing that you'll need is none other than, well, draftsmanship. So you need draftsmanship skills um, first, you know, to facilitate uh, the inventing part of things because it's it's impossible. It's it's very hard to invent everything, you know, just like that. You know, you can't. It's it's hard to foresee everything. At least if you see a little bit, uh, you know, you you might be able to invent something. Invent, you know, um, how big the vehicle is. Draw those few things in there. You know, draw some of the parts that you're going to need. You know, then you can add the details on later. You'll stop and you'll have to think about things like where's the air conditioner going to go? What kind of upholstery do, do we want? What kind of hood ornaments? You know, the smaller stuff. But um, that's, that's, you'll need the draftsmanship skills in the first place to be able to create these solid forms and place them 
in given positions to be able to say, I want, you know, two wheels, you know, four, two wheels in the front, two wheels in the back, you know, to say, I want it to be this, this, this wide, you know, this, that's what the draftsmanship part is. Now, um, again, from the modern artist crowd and from the, the, the crowd of noobs, um, I get people saying this, I want to get better. They say this all the time. You know, I used to say this a lot, you know, just got to get better, got to get better, got to get better, and get better at what? I got to get better at drawing. What's drawing? I don't know. I just take the pencil and I swizzle it around. How can you get better at something if you don't know what it is? So, you know, this is the thing is that you can't, you, you have to know what, what something is if you want to get better at it. And so you have to be able to improve your draftsmanship. Your draftsmanship, which is your skill of, you know, placing forms in space and saying how big and how wide. And then oh, I get this, I, I get people fighting back at me all the time. And they say, you know, they don't say this to my face, but I know they're thinking this in their head. And they're going to say, oh, I don't need to practice these lame exercises. I don't want to, I, I just want to draw a fucking dragon. I just want to draw, you know, a car. I want to draw, you know, I just want to whizzle a pencil around, you know. I just want to draw people. I don't want to practice these dumbass cubes. I don't want to tr practice these dumbass, you know, ellipses. You know, this is all boring stuff. And so, this is, you know, th this is the big fight, you know, that that I, I wind up having to deal with. And so, um, you know, I, I'm I'm going to show you just for a second. Uh, let me reorganize my workspace. Okay, let's see. And so, you know, you're going to get. Um, People are going to say, uh, you know, I don't want to practice, you know, drawing ellipses. I don't want to, you know, figure out how do I draw an ellipse from these different angles. I don't want to, I don't even want to practice circles. You know, this is, this is an exercise, you know, practicing drawing circles. This is, you know, this, this is just, drawing circles is, is just being able to, this is just an exercise for being able to control you know, where the pencil goes. You know, I would do things like say, hey, I just want to be able to hit that target. You know, be able to draw a straight line and relatively, you know, hit that target. These are, this is, you know, this is a really good exercise, you know, is, is just having some amount of precision. Um, you know, uh, being able to draw rows and rows of consistent circles, both clockwise and counterclockwise. You know, this is a really good exercise that you can do. And then, you know, there's, here's, here's another exercise, you know, once you're, once you're done with the drawing circles, then you have to learn, you know, how do I draw these ellipses from these different angles, right? This is a really important skill. Because if you want to draw cylinders, you know, it, it's good to be able to, to do the, the whole thing. Um, if you want to draw forms, then, then, okay, how about this? How about I take, what happens if we took this ball and we wrapped a, a wrapped a wire around it? Right? You want to practice wrapping wires around spheres. This is, you know, being able to sense the dimension of things. And then when you get really good at it, then you can. I learned this exercise um, several years ago. Uh, there was this one fellow, his name was uh, Charlie Bonifacio. He was uh, an animator. He's an animator and he did, um, he worked on Mulan. He worked on, uh, he animated. I think it was Mushu. He, he animated that that little red dragon, Mushu, and I remember him showing me, you know, his circle his circle practice. You know, he would do a lot of these. You know, he would fill it. He would spend 15 minutes, start the day, you know, doing 15 minutes of just circles, just to get his arm, you know, warmed up. And he does this. You know, this this is just to get himself warmed up. He doesn't just jump into it. He'll get himself warmed up. And I saw these these wire-wrapped spheres, you know, that he was doing. He didn't explain it. You know, I didn't quite understand what he was doing at the time. But now that I see it, it's like, wow, this is a really good way to feel the form. You know, you want to wrap a wire around things. And people say, oh, that has no style. It doesn't look, you know, it doesn't look like the final finished product. And I say, well, you know what? You shouldn't care about um, final finished products. You should just, you know, just, just concentrate on, on getting... Um, get the forms. People are always worrying about how things should look, and and I'm saying, well, you know, just get the forms. Um, you know, if I wanted to draw, say, a, a, a person, okay, I'm not going to bother trying to draw a person. I'm just going to draw. I'll wire. I'll I'll do a wire wrapping, you know, around where the person's torso might be, you know. There, I'm just wrapping wires. How about I'll, I'll, I will just wrap a wire around his leg, you know, where I think his leg, his leg should be. You know, this is just a way of 
rapid proto this is a way of um you know dealing doing some some rapid prototyping and even ahead you know i can do these wire wrappings let's see where do i want the the arm to go you know i i've i've got a number of choices well let's see where do i want forgetting about where the where the shoulder is or where maybe i can just let's say i want to put both um hands on this knee so i can place one hand there now i'm going to just wrap a wire around the arm You know, and now I can go in and I can draw. In fact, uh, let's see, hang on, let me bring up my, uh, where is it? Oh, custom panels, right. Uh, tool bin? I think it's, uh, I can't remember which one it is. Oh, animator panel, that's the one. Uh, oh, wait, that's not it. Windows, custom panel, oh, sketch panel, RGB. Here we go. Okay, so what I can do is I can you know change everything to blue I'm using um, a black pen this is all, all done using TV paint and now you see I can just draw the lines you know I don't need to to try and get everything to appear finished you know this is why you know you learn how to do some rapid prototyping stuff like this I mean the wire wrapping stuff this all comes from being able to draw ellipses right and once you can see where the forms are, then you know this is this stuff becomes really easy. Then I can just blow away the blue stuff. <laughs> you know, no one can tell. No one can tell the difference. You know, this is this is the you know this is why you practice something like an ellipse. You practice ellipses so you can. Let's see. Hang on. If I take a uh, uh, suppose I take. You know, uh, you know, a bar. Okay, I'm going to take a list of little bar, and I'm going to make it so that one end is fatter and the end of the end is is, small, is uh, skinnier. So the fatter end is closer to us. So this is is like an axis. You know, it's pointing in a direction. And there's an ellipse. You know, it intersects the ellipse right there. So by taking a bunch of these bars and moving them around, I can just from having from from understanding how to draw an ellipse, I can draw this sort of thing. Now I can just connect them. See, this is why you practice. This is why you practice drawing ellipses. Um, and even if, if, if you can understand how to draw an ellipse, you know, you can easily, you know, take an ellipse and turn it into, um, whoops, let me figure out the center. You can easily turn that ellipse into, you know, a, a square. And if you know how you know how to draw one ellipse and then another ellipse, and you do the same thing, then hey, there's a good way to draw boxes. You know, all these things are interchangeable. I can go and I can draw multiple ellipses, and I can also take these ellipses and turn them into square cross sections. And then there's going to be this same crowd of people who doesn't want to do their practice exercises. They're going to say, "Well, we don't want to do boxes. You know, we want to do, you know, this. We we, we want we want to draw arms and legs. Well, you know, it's still a matter of, you know, an arm segment. You can go into that thing. Then you can change the cross section. I can change the cross section to include." you know, finer details. And they don't like how this stuff looks like it's... They don't like that solid look. I don't know, they don't like the facets, they don't like the fact that, that you know, you can see every line. But this is where you gotta start. You know, you gotta start doing this stuff because eventually, you know, when you do enough of it, um, you get to the point where you can just see it, you know, you, you can just draw it, and, and you can just see it, but, um, you know, you got to start small, man, you got to start small, you got to do this, this, this simple stuff, and understand that drawing is, like I said, it's just manipulating a bunch of, you know, stuff, you can take an object, and again, wires, wrap some wires around it, right, wind, wind some wires around it, and then practice, you know, adding 
see I've, I've just added something that sticks to this. I can, with this ellipse, this ellipse drawing stuff, you know, lets me add parts to it. And if I want to, I can cut a hole into this and drop drop that back. So now I've, I can, I can cut a hole into this surface, right? This is dealing with form. Dealing with form is just a lot of, you know, adding and subtracting to objects. You know, even if you drew a, a person's head, It's the same thing, you know. I, I'm going to go and I'm going to say I want a, a flat plane on on one side of the face. I'm going to take this part here. I'm going to cut into it. I'm going to. If I wanted to do the, to do the wire wrapping, I can. Yeah, of course I can do the, the wire wrapping. Um, you know, except that the wire wrapping itself is going to have to be a little bit more. It's going to be a lot more complex. Here, let me just wire wrap the entire head. Then I can. Wire wrap. I mean, why else? They, this is why they call it, you know, a wireframe in, in in 3D. Whenever you're using a 3D program, what I do as a drafts person, you know, when I'm drawing, is the same thing that you know any 3D person, any person working on a 3D program is going to have to deal with, and that is the wire wrapping side of things. You know, how do I take this flat surface here and then build? something off of it. How do I attach these forms? This is this is drafting or you know what drawing really should be. And you know that's that's what it is. It's is it's it's it is what it is. It, you, you know you just you have to train yourself to take an object, you know, take an ellipse and push it away, push it away further, make it turn, make it go down, turn it towards the camera, flip it up. You know, you've got to be able to practice revolving your ellipses around, you know, an axis. Um, it's got to look three-dimensional. You know, it's this. This is how you have to be thinking a 3D, and it's not enough to do that. You have to practice, practice, practice. Because I, I used to fill up sketchbooks of this kind of stuff, you know, and then I can build go through the middle, make it come around, right? This is. What you gotta do, you know, you gotta you gotta practice. You gotta you need this skill before you can start invent you know you need this skill which is companion to inventing. You know, if you wanna be able to, 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 to do this sort of thing. And then even when you are painting, you know, even even if you're even if you don't like working with line, if you wanna work with tone you know it's it's still very much the same thing here watch i'm going <coughs> to i can go and i can take you know like this flat object here and hold on a second let me close one of these other applications in the background oh well yeah i guess that that'll do okay yeah sorry um yeah back to this thing you know i i can go and i can take you know, an object like this, and say, well, where's the light coming from? Right? I can say light's coming from, you know, the front, and shine, you know, more and more light on the front. Now it's like a cylinder, and you know, even a cylinder, I can say, well, there's the top side of the cylinder. You know, here's a side of the cylinder that the light isn't getting to. Right? So it looks curved, even though I haven't done anything else around it. You know, being able to control form. This is 
even if you're a painter and you're working with tone, this is something you have to be able to do. Um, I can even add to this cylinder, except I know that since the light is coming from behind, that there's going to be a, a shadow on this side, and the shadow is going to cast backwards like that. And then over here, there's going to be, you know, a side that is shadowed. So, you know, it's, it's, that's what drawing is. Drawing is being able to control this sort of, just being able to control lumps of stuff so that if you want to make something, it's, it, it, it's easy. Um, you know, even, even, here, I can even, uh, let's try this. Let's take a person's face as if he's lit, you know, by a flashbulb from the front. I'm going to go and I'm just going to darken all the sides of the face that are, you know, facing away. So again, I'm, I'm sculpting. Um, and then I'm going to have to bring the cheekbone back. I'm going to probably, I'm going to add a bit of a, a black background just because I... Okay, so let's see, I'm going to need to shine a bit more light back there, darken that off. I mean, nothing that I'm doing is particularly impressive, it's just, I'm just manipulating forms. I mean, you probably see people working in ZBrush probably doing this stuff. You know, it's very much the same thing. Going through and changing how When I can add a hairline, add a reflection on the hair. Uh, let me move everything downward and back to that. Okay. Just carve out the silhouette. I mean, that didn't take very long, did it? You go and you light, light up the areas, you know, this is just... It's just sculpting. Making a bunch of blobs of stuff and pushing the matter around. And then how you construct the uh, silhouette is going to affect, you know, his, his, his hairstyle.
So, you know, this is what I do. This is I, I you know, I can, I can invent and I can draft at the same time. I'm going to make a silhouette for the guy's neck. And then I can say, well, let's see, this area here, the light's going to be reflecting here. You know, it's... Mind you, I don't have any photo reference in front of me. I'm just making this up as I go along. Um, you know, I mean, I, I'm just using my basic knowledge of, of you know, of, of the human skull and human anatomy. Uh, everything else that I do is... You know what feels right, <laughs> but you know it's 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 the stuff. It's um, it doesn't have to be hard, but you just have you just have to practice. You know, you just got to put the hours into it, and you got to see it as being able to push and pull forms. Let me see if I can make things a little more symmetrical. But yeah, that's that's basically what I do. So. You know, production art, production art, and modern art. Learn the difference. Learn the difference between you know um, drawing and drafting. You know, don't just see it as just oh, drawing and doing whatever it is you want to do. You gotta, you know, you got you gotta think. You gotta, you gotta, you can't just do this. You can't just do this stuff haphazardly. Anyway, I'm just going to keep on painting this. So if you want to stop the video now, that's cool. But I'm going to keep on going. A bit of specular reflection. Oops. Oh, what do you know? My first undoes. <laughs> yeah, so it's... I mean, it can be a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, I guess that's enough. That's enough messing around. Yeah, I've sure is addictive. Okay, enough, enough, enough.